to the pitch with Manny Del Carmen and Sarah Russo, and we have my favorite author, Robin Lee, here from The Idea of You. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Hi, guys. How's everything going? Good, you know, I mean, considering the world is ending, it's great, <laughs> pretty much, <laughs> you know. Oh, stop it, it's not ending. <laughs> um. <laughs> I don't know if you guys have kids, but I have kids and they are home with me for the foreseeable future. So it does feel a little like, oh my God. Um, <laughs> but it's, it's okay. The sun is shining today and I am alive and healthy. And my family is healthy. So today's good. Today's good for all of us. You know, it does feel like that kind of thing. Like you don't know if you survived a trip to the supermarket until 14 days later. Just. It's so that's <laughs> a true point. Manny always goes to the supermarket every day. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I, I try to keep my status up. I think I'm the customer of the century for a stop and shop right now because I go literally every day. And now I catch myself just going just to make an appearance. I don't even buy anything. So <laughs> I'm down to like once a month now. Like and we'll order things in between. Like, yeah, but actual getting into the supermarket and dealing with all that like once a month. No, no. I, I, I do Instacart. I should be like their brand ambassador. I'm always on it. I just want to stay away. <laughs> Did you do? Yeah, a lot. Yeah. yeah. Well, the, th the thing is for me, I like to cook, like whatever I'm going to cook that day, I go buy it. So I don't like to have stuff frozen and then have to unfreeze it. So I just rather go to Stop and Shop and buy whatever I'm having that day. Mm -hmm. See, I like, I, it forces you, I feel like it forces you to plan ahead and buy stuff for like the week i mean like a few a few definite um recipes i have in mind when i go and then i just buy things that i think oh this will go with this or that will go with that or like i can always use parsley i can always use cilantro whatever it is yeah i actually planted my herb garden yesterday so did you I really yeah i was like i might as well get this done it's yeah I don't have did you plant else to do. seeds or did you plant actual um like seedlings. I mean, did you plant actual little plants? The little plants. So there's like four little basil leaves so far. Right. <laughs> um, where did you get them? You I bought them actually at the local farmer's market um, in Halifax. I was like, you know, I've been buying all my produce locally and supporting right. them. So I was like, and it wasn't even that expensive. So I love supporting the, right. the local people around here. Yeah, I'm thinking about planting a, a nice, like a kitchen garden with like lots of herbs. Um, yeah. I love doing it. It's, I feel like fun. it's a little late to start from seeds, but maybe I will. I mean, it's California. It's like always anything like, can grow. <laughs> <laughs> it is like you're following a recipe, and it's like, oh, but I don't have this, and it's like I'm right. Gonna help for dill, or oh, yeah. chives, or parsley. So <laughs> I can like all those things just right there. You just go right out and get it, yeah. man. You need your own garden. I'll come plant it for you guys. No problem. No, I'm good. I've seen I've seen you work a little bit, so I don't know. <laughs> I saw, I saw, I, you, you show me pictures of the plants, so I don't know if, how long they're going to survive, but we'll see. But <laughs> All right, we'll, well that's we'll going to be a running bet. <laughs> 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 well, anyway, so some of you guys, also, Robin has been in so many movies, and she's been on Hitch, my favorite, uh, Fifty Shades, she was in that. Um, tell me about being on that, like, is Jamie Dornan as hot? in real life as he was on screen. <laughs> um, yes, and it's so funny. Was he in my dream last night? <laughs> I dreamt I was on a set with all these people who were doing like an ensemble cast and it was like people I haven't worked with like Hugh Grant and Rachel Weisz, but there uh -huh. were some people that I had worked with. I remember thinking, oh, we're in Canada, we're in Vancouver. And so I feel like Jamie might've been there. Um, but yes, he's, he's lovely. Mm -hmm. uh, He's hot. Uh, he's, he's definitely a really good looking guy. But when, you're, when you're shooting and you're not shooting, that's not, that's not your, you know, that's not I, your I, I, I feel like I shouldn't that's be in this conversation for some reason. <laughs> like, I feel like I should get muted or, or no, something. No, no, no. I mean, know? I feel like when you're working with a really attractive guy, but he's not playing your love interest, let's say. Yeah. You turn that off. Like, you're just, we're just two actors and we're doing the scene because I'm supposed to be thinking of you as right. uh, boss or colleague or whatever um it's really interesting because um, being an actress you do get to work with some really really good looking guys uh, and and so there are times you have to turn it off because sometimes they're playing your brother let's say <laughs> <laughs> yeah you don't want any incestuous 
<laughs> so it's uh, so you just kind of you, you try to see them in the role, the character that they're playing. But at the same time, you become friends off off camera, and it's uh -huh. really nice. It's way more important to me to work with someone who's a really genuinely nice mm -hmm. person than a really good looking guy. And he's yeah. genuinely nice. Like that makes it so much easier because you don't want to, you know, we, we did the shoot, we did this helicopter, bigger helicopter crash scene. Oh, we that's like, right. Yes. Helicopter cab kind of thing. Yeah. For, for, I don't know, eight hours and it's like 80 degrees. It happened to be like ridiculously hot day in Vancouver. Uh-huh. You're like, you're right up next to each other the whole time. You don't get along. Like, if he's not <laughs> your person, you know what I'm saying? Like, it, it can make the entire situation uncomfortable and unhappy and mm -hmm. not regrettable. But, you know, you don't want to leave the set with a sour taste in your mouth. And it, it really helps to work with lovely people. So, All right, so so not so talk to me about one of my favorite movies because I have to look it up. You know, National Security. National Security. You know, where Martin Lawrence is <laughs> one of my favorite actors. You know, with the Bad Boys and all that stuff. How was it working with him? And um, just it, it was it really the Bumblebee in the movie that got him, or with the the way the world is, you never know. He's like, know? let's change subject here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, no more hot men. Let's talk about. You no, know, he's you know. like he's a funny guy. Like he's he's a comedian. He goes on stuff. He's. This is so long ago now, but he's on set and he's he's telling jokes. He's kind of a prankster, like the entire time you're there. I spent more of my time hanging out with Steve Zahn, um, who plays m my love interest in the movie, and he was a really really sweet guy. So I got to know him better because he just he was newly he had a kid. I was engaged at that point in time, and he was uh. married with I think a baby and then maybe another baby on the way, and it was just like we just talked about things like that and like. Yeah. Just I, I just I, I love comedy movies and so when it comes to whenever I see it my wife hates it because if it's on like I love old movies so if I see National Security on she's like you're gonna put this on again you know so <laughs> I just gotta like I'm old school like I like old school movies but and that was one of my favorites so. that many times. like I, I feel like I've seen there's so many movies that I've done that I've seen <laughs> like I saw at the premiere and maybe one other time maybe once in the theater or whatever and that's mm -hmm. it. I don't, I don't really? think I've seen more than twice. My scenes I've seen a lot because then like I cut them and I put them in a reel and so I can uh -huh. into all that really specific. But the whole storyline, unless you're I doing like that, unless you're doing a film that's like Oscar worthy and you're going to all these different events or you're in a, an indie that gets played at a lot of festivals, it's really easy to only see your movie once or twice. That's true. true. Yeah. That's very true. I love listening to you talk about all this because I'm like fascinated with the industry and everything that happens. And speaking of that, everything must be kind of shut down so no one's working. Everything's What's that everything's like? Quiet. Um, you know, it's it's nice. It's like <laughs> it's like an extended vacation. Um, it's uh -huh. not it's not the first month or two we're we're okay because it's like uh -huh. no one's working. There's no stress. I'm not going to worry about what it's my next job going to be. Whatever. But now right. it's starting to get a little bit like, okay, when are we, when are we going to work again? Like, what's, yeah. what's mm -hmm. next? Um, I know. I was because to do this project, and now that's not going to happen because things are falling through and money's falling through and everything was uh, hard. Long that's ways. terrible. Disappointing. I know. I feel like we're not going to have a fall season of TV and Manny's going to be like, no baseball or TV, Manny? Well, yeah. no ba baseball right now. Actually, I, actually, Nesson called me. I'm doing like this like a special from the 2007 World Series oh, on nice. Thursday, right. which is pretty cool. So it kind of keeps us busy. But I don't really see, you know, baseball sports for that matter coming back. I mean, mm -hmm. I'm a strong believer. Like, I want it to come back, but I'm a strong believer better to be safe than sorry. And obviously, people still getting affected. It's still kind of going on. And, you know, our governor just opened up some stuff. But mm -hmm. a lot of people have said that they didn't open the stuff that they wanted. But right. it's, yeah. you know, I'd rather be safe than sorry, man. It's, you know, it sucks. But I'm enjoying being home, actually. And I get to play golf now because they open the golf courses. Yay! That's a nice. That's a nice social distance sport. No, it's good. It, you know, it took forever. We were the last day to open up, but it's it's finally open. So I've I've gone Saturday, Sunday, the last couple of weekends, and my wife wants to kill me. So. That's good. <laughs> you get out of the house, you get some exercise, you breathe, you <laughs> right? And you have to walk. There's no carts. I'm trying to convince her to give me like oh, a really? handicap. A handicap sticker so I can use a card because you need a handicap card, but uh, they won't give me one. Are they banning the cards because they, because they assume they'll be contaminated? Is that what it is? I mean, is that why they, they just, 
Well, well, they like I know some places are given like individual cards. I right. but Massachusetts since they just opened, they'd rather you walk. So you need like a push card, and I get it. But eventually, yeah. you know, these courses get long, man, and I yeah. <laughs> and I hate walking. So. <laughs> Mm. Or you. <laughs> or you. Thank you. As long as you feel me, Sarah. And as long but we as have to talk about your favorite book. The idea. Yes. This is what Robin wrote, and it's my favorite book of all time. It really is. The book club bimbos loved it. It was their favorite <laughs> book so far. <laughs> that makes me happy. Yes. So tell us a little bit how you got this idea of. Um, it's like a forty-year-old woman who's divorced and goes to a concert and goes backstage and falls in love with like a 22 year old Harry Styles. <laughs> Has a little like thing. Styles, go with that dance. I know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I, I Should know. I get muted again or? No, 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 no you can come oh, okay. there. You can, hear. <laughs> <laughs> you can come back. <laughs> My husband just arrived with groceries and he's wiping them down. I don't know if you can hear him. Like if you can hear him, I'll put my earphones on. Oh, no, we can't. No, no, we're, no, we're good. It's like right up there. Um, so he, uh, so I, about five years ago, six years ago now, 2006, six years ago, I was home with the kids. My husband was away in, on business, like New York or something like that. And I was up late at night. The kids are both quite young, <laughs> off asleep. And I was, like surfing like YouTube um, late at night and I'd, Sarah just disappeared. <laughs> I, was, <laughs> I know, just, just keep going, we're good. That's what she does. She, <laughs> <Late at night. laughs> I don't want to start coughing on you. Oh. I don't know why. Oh, they said, it's contagious. they said it's contagious through the phone now. So just, <laughs> just so you know. <laughs> they got me laughing because then I start coughing. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> I was up late at night surfing YouTube and I came across a guy in a band who was really, really beautiful, but like ridiculously young, obviously. And it, and it wasn't even like, uh, he, I think it was just, he was just beautiful. And I was kind of like, what a pretty boy. Thinking he's a boy. <laughs> but, like, <laughs> but, uh, but like, why did you guys like that when I was like that age and like into boy um, and then I like spend this time going down a, a, a rabbit hole, like an hour or so, like looking him up, whatever. And I realized that like he occasionally dated older women, whatever. And so it was like, oh, like that's nice. That's a nice idea. If, like, you know, another <laughs> lifetime, if I wasn't married with two kids. And yeah. then when I came home, like a few days later, we were, we were at an event and I was talking to him and I joked and I was like, I found this perfect guy. Um, I'm thinking about leaving you and the kids and running off to be with him except he's in a band and he's half my age. <laughs> and he's like, you're crazy. <laughs> he gave you this one? He gave you this oh, one? Right. Then he's like, uh, uh, story. And I was kind of like, oh, yeah, that would make yeah. a good one. And then I knew, like, the second he said it, I knew, A, he was right, and B, I could write it and do it really well. Like, I, um, when I was still in school, I started a company with a girlfriend of mine, and we started managing singing groups. And oh. we met this one girls' group um, that was uh, produced by one of the new kids on the block. And so I got to know Boston. The new kids on the block, Boston. I got to know <laughs> the new kids on the block fairly well, at least a few of them fairly well during that time period. And so I and they were still kind of like at the height of their fame. Yeah. They came down, but mm -hmm. before they took off. I don't know how many years they took off for getting back together. But anyway, I felt like I knew that world. I had access to that world. I knew what the chaos what, and yeah. the, uh, like frenetic feel of a fandom was like and that kind of energy and like zeal. It's like have all that like commotion around you all the time. Like I figured, oh, I, I know that world. I can capture it. Yeah. Paper. All I need to do is like update it 20 years. So I, I mm -hmm. did a lot of research to find out like what boy bands today were like, what their schedules were like, what their, <laughs> you know, what their like tours are like, their events are like, what shows are hot now. Like, you know, like mm -hmm. we didn't have James Corden and Tony for back in back in back in the day. <laughs> Cineo Hall. So, I like, know. No, it was. <laughs> so, like, we're up with it. Um, but yeah, it, I had and I had a, and I was like turning 40 and I knew what that. I felt like there's a lot that comes along with being approaching this like milestone age where you're you're suddenly 
you're a uh, the world is telling you that you're, maybe you're not as young and viable as you used to be. And all that me all the time. That is, <laughs> that's right. That's the question you're still feeling like, but I still feel like I did when I was 27, whatever. Okay. Why am I suddenly not yeah. um, attractive or uh, desirable? And so I wanted to like delve into that deeper. And so I, I did it through the lens of this woman who's, who's in the art world and... Mm -hmm like all the things that she's yearning for and representing and like she represents solely other women artists and artists of color because like she's trying to give like voice to people who don't necessarily get a voice and a lot of the artwork deals with that idea of becoming invisible at a certain age and how women start to feel invisible like mm -hmm. yeah I kind of wanted to deal with like that, like feminism and sexism and look at the darker side of celebrity because I feel like a lot of people have this idea of what it is to be famous and they put yeah. their, their idols up on a pedestal and worship them and assume that their lives are this kind of perfect thing. Like, and they're not, I mean, they, they deal with issues like mm -hmm. me, and they also deal with Regular. issues that you don't have to deal with as well. Like the idea right. of like, privacy and not knowing who your real friends are and who's angling for something else. And then just not being able to like get away, to trust people entirely. So I just wanted, wanted to look at all the, the dark. Yeah. Well, and that's interesting you say that too, because I, I work with a lot of country musicians. I go back stage. <clears throat> I see it all the time, like how these women throw themselves at these guys. I mean, Manny, you could, you know, you were a Red Sox player. The ladies. I mean, I got, hey. <laughs> right? it was, it, you know, it's, it's at, when you're young, it's exciting because, you know, I mean, the, the, the good thing is the Red Sox organization was really good teaching us all these things in the minor leagues before you get to the big show. And and it, and it started like in the minor leagues, like when you were like a nobody kind of, and women would still do that. You know, they yeah. still throw themselves at you and stuff like that. So, I mean, for you guys, I mean, you guys are on TV all the time, like red carpet stuff, like parties and all this stuff. And I mean, I don't think any of us think that it's easy, you know, because I know we're not living in those shoes, but I know it's tough. And, you know, just in sports, I mean, people, you know, you don't know who's trying to be your friend or trying to get something out of you. I mean, I've been lucky. I've had the same friends as I was five years old, the same families growing up. And, you know, so I can't imagine you, Robin, like how people approach you or want something from you. And I, I don't want anything from you. I just want to be like an extra on your next movie or like a security <laughs> guard or, you know, or something, you know. Something like <laughs> I even, that. I, I even shaved. I even shaved so I could look younger. So I could be like, oh, man, you got the face good. for her, you know. You could be in the band. Hire me. <laughs> <laughs> he did Did you know that he was auditioning for a role? I did not. I did yeah, not. I'm, 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 I'm trying to give you both angles. Like, you know, oh, I'm like oh, yeah. this way and like, Looks good. Oh, angles yeah. like, like this whoa. way. Looking good. <laughs> I, could be, I could be an extra. Like, as long as you've got like a good jawline, defined jawline, you're in. There you yeah, go. I, I'm good. There. <laughs> <laughs> Well, um, speaking of that, and uh, are you going to turn this into a movie? Because I think it would make an incredible movie. It'd be like a nice, big time, Sex in the City type thing. Um, I'd like to. I would love to turn it into a movie. We'll yeah, we'll I hope so. <laughs> you know? Or even, you know what? Now with Netflix, you could do like a small series like Reese Witherspoon's done. Series, yeah. I told you, if you're not playing the role, I'm up. I'm I'm down to play it. <laughs> I have a lot of female friends volunteering. Can I, can I be <laughs> Like, I, I know for, I know for sure I'm gonna, I'm not a big reader, but I did read up a little bit on the book and I think it's a book that my wife would really love. But if you do the movie, I'll definitely go watch that. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm putting that in there. I'm making note of it. Yeah. That'll be awesome. Yeah. So go right back to this video and be like, there's the guy. There's the guy right there. <laughs> <laughs> so do you have any new novels coming up? Are you writing? Um, I'm working on? now. I'm, I'm using this quiet, not quiet, but time at home to write <laughs> the next one. I'm working on something. I don't want to talk about it. It's still kind of early, but totally I, fine. I feel like I'm making progress during this quarantine time. So. Good. Good. I can't wait to see what comes up next. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> She's like, I don't know. I don't know. But, I don't know. Um, like so much goes into like, publishing a book, you know, like you're, you're coming up with your ideas, whatever, and you're, you're brainstorming, you're outlining, you're writing all your character notes, and then you sit down and start writing, and it's 
uh -huh. it starts taking a shape of its own. Like you, you had this idea that what your characters were going to do, and then suddenly they become some become something different. Um, mm -hmm. And they kind of sometimes they start writing the story for you. I know that writers say that often. I used to think, what do you mean? Like, aren't you writing it? But when you, your characters become so clear and developed in your head, they, and their voices become clear, like when yeah. you two of them together things they say to each other might not be what you'd planned. Like you, you had an idea, a scene was going to go one way and you start writing it and it goes in a completely different direction. Mm -hmm. You just have to follow it. So I'm still in that period where I'm kind of feeling them out. And, and That's and so cool. Together and seeing how they interact. <laughs> and it's kind of, it's, kind it's of cool. cool to hear that too. Cause I've been actually writing on this time off, like a children's book, but it's based on, um, actually it's based on all my dogs. Randomly, this is back here. Um, this is what their character uh, like. <laughs> <laughs> Are they chihuahuas? Or they yeah, they're all chihuahuas. They're all, it's like about adopting and don't shopping. They're all adopted from California. Huh? Nice. Yeah. But I only, I mean, two of them have passed, but it kind of will be a nice little kid's book. Like, you know, I hope. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to come to you, Robin, and like talk about how to get this done. <laughs> Did the dog form a boy band? <laughs> <laughs> that would be so funny actually i'm your woman <laughs> <laughs> well we thank you so much for sitting down and talking to us um everybody can get the book at um, amazon it's on my amazon page so i'll do a link for that and i have to let manny's wife borrow it next so uh -huh. i got I'm, I'm gonna order one i want to hear what she has to say manny when you're when you're done yeah she likes reading <laughs> books and stuff like that though so. because i like to say this now i'm Men or husbands benefit so much from this book and they don't realize it. And I just need to put that out there. It's it so is, true. I don't know. I, I'm, order, I'm, order, I, I'm gonna order it tonight. Just uh, it. And, call, and call you on it. You well, know? No, you'll so. know when she starts it. Yeah. Right. Things will just change. <laughs> <laughs> like, right. You promise? Do you promise? I'm, I'm, I'm well, ordering 10, co okay. ten <laughs> copies. I'm ordering 10 <laughs> copies. So wherever she goes in the house, she has a chance to read a little bit. I'm putting, right. Spread it all around the house. <laughs> only you manny only you I'm just saying. <laughs> do what you gotta do yeah no but don't forget about me like next time you guys you famous actresses and actors get together you need an extra guy security go. i got i got you i know i, I live all over we're, we're different coasts different coasts but i'll take a flight overnight and i'm good i'll get there <laughs> with a mask with a mask yeah with a mask yeah mm -hmm. and gloves extra gloves but <laughs> Those, we'll get yeah. we'll get through this. We'll get through this. We will. <laughs> we, we will. And Robin, we look forward to that new book that might be on the horizon. Thank you. Thank you very Keep much. Keep me posted. Thank you so much for coming by. Thanks, Sarah. Thank, Thank you, Robin. You're awesome. Sarah Manny, we'll see you next week. Bye. Later.